Hazel from 90 Fiance has some really bad news. Oh my God, this just breaks my heart to even say it. This is sad and scary and not good. Yours truly got to watch a little itty bitty sneak peek of the new episode of 90 Day Fiance. And in it, we got to hear some stuff from Hazel and it's not sounding good. So let's not waste any time and just jump right into this one. Like I said, I watched a sneak peek and in it, we got to hear that, you know, the, the filming of Tariq and Hazel was going on in last April. We all know what was going on in April. You know, that time it was a god-awful time. It was the stay-at-home pandemic crap. And that was going on in America. It was also going on in the Philippines. And if you guys don't know, Hazel has a very, very, very little son. I'm totally blanking on his name. I want to say Harry, but I don't know. She has a son, very little guy, and he's living with the dad. And the dad got remarried, so his stepmom. However, this was in April, and they, the stepmom called Hazel and said, hey, your son, yeah, he has a fever, which obviously that can only, not only, but that can mean one thing, which, I'm, you know, just got awful and horrible and scary. And Hazel said that during this time in April, the pandemic and everything was crazy over in the Philippines, and she got the news that he had a fever, and she's sitting here in, you know, Virginia Beach, and she can't do a single thing. And we got to see her get emotional and start crying, and it was just one thing after another. I don't know about you guys. I have nothing bad to say about Hazel besides the fact that I think that she has no interest in Tariq in an actual romantic relationship, but I like her. I think she is cute and nice and sweet, and when I saw her cry and she was just like, there's nothing I can do, and the worst thing was she said, I feel guilty because it's like, I'm here, I should be there, I should be with my son, and now I can't even help him, and I feel worthless, and oh, I just feel so bad. Now, if you're wondering, well, what happened to the son? I have got, I have no idea. I don't know what happened to him. I believe he is okay and healthy. I believe, like I said, this was filmed in April, so I think he's okay. I went through Hazel's Instagram, and unfortunately, she doesn't post much. However, in January, she did post a picture of him right there. You can see it for yourself. It literally says nothing. I think it says, I love you. So, I mean, fingers crossed, knock on wood. Hopefully, the guy makes it out okay, and hopefully, it was nothing too serious. I have no idea, though, and definitely super, 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 super number one scary, and number one just sad. Oh, I feel bad for her, but however, thankfully for her, she does have Reek, who is a nice guy, and he was comforting her as best he can. I think he is a very nice guy. She's very sweet, too. I like them together. Not really a great role. Man, to couple it, they had that friendship bond, whatever, and oh my god, I just feel bad for her. So I don't know. I believe that they're going to end up making it. little spoiler alert, but I think they're going to be just fine. I don't know if she can ever go back and forth to the Philippines. I know they were talking about getting her son over to America. I'm not sure how it's all playing out, especially in the fact that we're still in the middle of a freaking pandemic. So I don't know. Definitely some sad news, though, and I just, ugh, I'm wishing them the best. And like I said, I got to see a sneak peek for this 90 Day Fiance episode because finally we have another episode last week and we didn't have one because of the stupid Super Bowl. But now we we have one and it's looking pretty good. We got to see a couple different things. Starting off with the Hazel and Reek thing. That was sad. That kind of sucked. However, we got to see some other pretty good drama and I want to talk about a couple that's been a little bit lower key and that would be Yara and Jovi. There they are right there and guess what? We've met Jovi's mom. We've even met Jovi's aunt. However, we've never met the dad and I kind of thought that is odd. I wonder if they don't have a relationship or what but no, he's been gone for work and we finally got to meet him. He is basically like an older version of Jovi, I thought. I could be wrong, but they're similar. They're walking around with, you know, Bud Light and all this crap, and they're having fun. They're joking around, but the dad had some comments to say about Yara that I found kind of shocking. Number one, they just jumped right into the fact that, you know, stereotypically Ukrainian people, ladies mainly, want to just come to America, and they find the first man that they can find, and they just get married, and they come to America. And they literally told, you know, Yara that, and she was just like, I think that's rude. I think that's a stereotype. And she goes, that's the equivalent to saying that everyone in America America is just stupid and she said it right to their face so it was that was there's a little bit of back and forth definitely some tension in the room and then straight up the dad just told Yara he said hey look I've seen pictures of you on Joby's Facebook and let me tell you something you cannot dress like that here in Louisiana if you are in New Orleans you're downtown you cannot be walking around dressed like that and I don't think the outfits were that bad or you know revealing or anything they weren't that bad come on but you know he was like no 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 you can't do that and when Yara heard that she was was, she was she was definitely ready to go. She didn't say anything back to him, but then we ended up you know hearing from her later, and she was like, "He cannot 
tell me what to wear. He cannot tell me what to do. I'm going to wear what I want to wear and do what I want to do. And I was like, ooh, we got a little bit of tension in the room. And then the same, you know, dad, the mom and dad asked Yara, okay, well, hey, do you like living in America? How is it? And she goes, no, it's awful. I don't want to live here. I hate it here. And she goes, what I would like to do is move to Budapest. I was like, what? Bo because Budapest, I guess, is closer to Ukraine. I guess me being the, you know, geographical idiot I am, I have no idea, but apparently it is. And the mom was like, oh my God, I don't want to do that because if, which now we know that they do have a grandbaby, but she was like, if I ever do get any grandbabies, I'm never going to be able to see them if they're living in Budapest, which is kind of a double-edged sword though, because Yara does have her family and it's kind of the, you know, it's just, they both had, they both want to see them. So they should definitely probably try to compromise. I believe, spoiler alert, they're still in good old Louisiana, but I could be wrong, but I'm pretty confident they're still down there with the baby. But like I said, she got to meet the dad. It was a little awkward, a little weird. They're definitely not starting off on the right foot. And I don't think the dad, to be honest, had much interest in Yara either. And then there was kind of a scandal, you know, stupid scandal in air quotes. It was stupid. Basically, we've seen it all season. Yara does not want Joby's mom to throw her a party, which I find just incredibly dumb because you can have a party here, you can have a party there, you can have, you can have parties everywhere. You don't need to just have one party. You can have a party, you know, it's like, what? That's the dumbest thing. She wants to throw a party, throw a freaking party. And that just, mm, that makes me so mad. I get her reasoning because her mom, Yara's mom, would not be able to be there, but it's still, it's like, come on, have a party with that, have a party with these people, have a party, have as have many parties if you want. That's the dumbest thing. But anyway, Yara, you know, Joey's mom persisted, and finally, Yara was just like, whatever, we can have a small party. And then now, because Yara and Joby went to actually go see, you know, his parents, they're going there for this party, and then Joby's mom confessed it was some stupid thing. She was, I, I have to do say, though, I invited like 50 or 60 people to the party, which I'm just like, fantastic. And what a big deal. Who cares? Not a big deal. And if you are wondering, well, we all know Yaro is pregnant. Did she, you know, did she or Jovi tell his parents? It does not sound so. I believe they're still kind of keeping it a secret. I know for a fact that, well, while in the preview we saw that he did not tell them, but I don't know if he's going to be telling them in this next episode or if they're going to wait even further because Jovi did say that he wants to wait a few weeks to tell them, which is like, I mean, you could at least just say it, but he wants to wait. He said it's too early, which I get, but hey, it is still your family, so why not just tell them? That's just my take, though. I'm, I guess they don't agree. But because everyone in Jovi's, you know, group and everything loves to do this and they love to party. I bet you now that we're going to this this little, you know, wedding party, I guess, I wouldn't be shocked if because Yara won't be drinking at all, they start kind of questioning her and then the truth comes out that they are expecting a baby. I would not be shocked if that happens. It looks like though that they get into a ginormously huge fight. And I don't know about what, but they get into a fight, maybe about Joby's drinking actually at the party, and Yo Yara is super mad, and she storms on out. Oh yeah, then we saw the worst couple to ever be on this show ever in a million years ever, and that'd be Mike and Natalie, who I just absolutely hate with all my heart. And y'all, y'all can call me a hater, I really don't care, I can't stand these two. They are a god-awful couple. All Natalie does is complain, and when Natalie's happy, Mike is mad. When Mike is happy, Natalie's mad. And that's all we saw. They went out to eat. Okay, good, they're gonna go on a date. Fantastic. They sit down. Natalie says, we need to go to therapy. We need to go to counseling. And Mike immediately says no. And this is what I mean. Natalie was happy. She said, I'm so excited because she just discovered the idea of therapy. And she was so excited about it. And she was getting ready to tell him. And then when she told him, he just said, nope. He had no emotion. He goes, I'm not doing it. I'm not going to go waste the money, which is probably expensive. But I will say, it probably wouldn't hurt. Regard you know, minus the price, because it probably is expensive. But if you filter out the price, I'm sure therapy would not hurt these two because they need it. And it does look like they end up going, but I, you know, when Mike was at dinner, he told her, he goes, no, 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 no. I am not going to therapy. I refuse to do it and I'm not going to do it. He didn't feel comfortable. He didn't want to do it. And then the price thing too. But like I said, we got to see in an upcoming episode, it does appear that they do end up going to therapy and I don't know what it's going to do. The kind of the funny thing I didn't realize though, is they're on day 45. They have now made it 45 days out of the night. So they're 50% they're there and they, and he has not given her a ring. He has not bought a suit. She has not bought her dress and they have still not set a date for the wedding. And if you're asking me, ugh, 
I would send her home or I would just say, Natalie, this isn't going to work. We should not get married. Go on home. If you only have 45 days to marry someone and you have not given them a ring and you are not convinced that you want to marry them, why do it? I mean, come on. What is going on with these two? Why won't they just, you know, go their separate ways, go back home and end the relationship? But I hate to say it again, but spoiler alert, it sounds like they do get married. So I don't know what happens. I don't know what changes, but oh my God, these two are a God awful couple, but maybe going to therapy helps. I personally Personally, I don't think it would hurt. I mean, I, besides the money stuff, but I definitely don't think therapy would hurt these two at all. But comment below what you guys think. I just don't see what the saving grace could be. I mean, they're a rotten couple. They have nothing in common. They're constantly fighting. They don't seem to like each other. Why be together? And then I saw, last but not least, probably one of my most disliked persons to ever be on 90 Fiancé, and that would be Ryan. Now, I, I'm not just saying that because Stephanie, if you don't already know, Stephanie is going to come on my channel. She has agreed to for an interview. I am not saying saying that just to be nice to her. I mean it from the bottom of my heart. I cannot stand this guy. I think Stephanie's a character too, but Ryan, oh my God, he is so negative. He's mean, he's negative, he's rude, he's not funny, he's cocky. I don't know what she saw in him, and yes, you can already believe, I'm going to the first thing I'm gonna ask her, what did you see in the guy? Because not only is he rude, cocky, annoying, and just not very nice, in my opinion, he's not the, you know, not very good looking guy either. And I'm from the same place she's from. We're both from Michigan. And I can tell you one thing. There are a lot of men that look a lot better than Ryan walking around Michigan. That's my other question. Why didn't you meet a man in Michigan? Why did you meet Ryan? Ryan is a jerk. But long, 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 long story short, we got to see them together. They were fighting. This is why I don't get about these two. One second, they're fighting like crazy. The next second, they appear to be buddy-buddy. And so we saw them in the last episode. They were fighting like crazy. And then it's like the, now we see in this episode that they're like hula hooping and you know they're having a good time and for the first time I have ever seen on this show with these two people they're like actually kind of having a good legitimate time but of course that lasted you know I don't know what like five seconds of the Ryan because immediately the guy flipped the switch and he started getting mad and rude and once again I don't want to just side with Stephanie because you guys think I'm just coming on the channel I mean from the bottom of my heart I really don't understand what she saw in him but basically what happened long story short they were having an awful fight. In this episode, they were starting to kind of work out their differences. They were hula hooping. They were having a good time. Then they sat down to chat and pretty much what happened was Stephanie, I believe, gave Ryan and his family money because she's taking care of them financially. For me, I don't get why. Let them live your own life. You know, shouldn't Ryan be taking care of them or his own family? It's just like, let them live their own life. But she's giving them money, which is nice, but still, so they're going to walk all over you. But she was giving them money, and then, you know, she kept giving them and giving them and giving them. And finally, the last time, his mom just didn't even say thank you. She said, she, I think she just said, okay, thanks. And it was, she blew, you know, Stephanie off. And Stephanie just wanted a formal thank you. This money is giving us food. Thank you so much. But she did not give it to her and Stephanie called her out. And long story short, you know, Ryan's mom blocked her on, I don't know if it was on Messenger or on text or what it was, but she blocked Stephanie. So Stephanie's like, well, shoot, I want my money back. If you're not going to say thank you, and if you're not going to have the decency, just say, hey, I appreciate it. This money's helping us a lot. I want my money back because she has a right. And she was like, hey, money doesn't grow on trees. I'm working hard and I'm making this money and I'm being nice to give it to you guys for no apparent reason and you guys can't even say thank you but Ryan who I like I said a million times I can't stand this guy he goes well you're just trying to control us and I don't maybe she is maybe she is and I don't know I don't care maybe she does want to control everyone but I can tell you one thing she's still giving you money and if you're accepting it you have to you have to at least you know you got to be it's like you're using the crap out of her Ryan and you have to at least be cordial enough to say thank you I appreciate it this is amazing thank you so much was that difficult? That, that, that took what? You know, three seconds? So it's just, I don't have a, I don't like them. I don't even like Ryan's mom after hearing that. I think that's rude. Maybe there's more going on behind the scenes between Ryan's mom and Stephanie, but it is just like, why is it like this? I don't understand why Stephanie is so freaking delusional with this guy. Why give them money? Why do stuff if they're going to walk all over you? But that was the fight. And Ryan basically just said that if she thinks she can control us, I'm going to cut off ties with her. And it's like, dude, come on, get out of here. This is so freaking stupid. You know you're here for one thing, and that's the money. And he probably doesn't care at all if Stephanie is controlling him because he's probably doing God knows what with other women. So it's just stupid. It's a joke. And oh my God, I cannot stand him. But like I said, 
Stephanie's gonna be coming on this channel very soon in a couple days and she will share her side to the story. And also that was about it for the little sneak peek I gotta see. We gotta see a little bit of stuff with Andrew and Amira. It sounds like Andrew's gonna try to convince Amira to fly over to Serbia, which we'll have to see how that goes. I kind of have my reasoning on a couple. I have, I have some ideas on how that trip's gonna go, but I will keep my lips sealed. I won't give out any spoilers. Go to my last bit if you wanna see some spoilers on those two, but I'll keep my lips sealed for now. And then that was about it. Nothing with Brandon and Julia. I'm real curious to see how that plays out because I don't know for sure on those two crazy lovebirds. Well, all right, y'all, 90 Day Fiance, the sneak peek clip. I will be back here in a couple days with the recap of what exactly went down in the last episode. But for now, y'all, please, it means the world to me if you can hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the comments below, and y'all better stay tuned for many more videos.